Do you like your army? I look forward to seeing them in action. They'll do their job well. I'll guarantee that. Thank you for your time, Django. Always a pleasure to meet a Jedi. We would be honored if you would join us. Our clones training program was about 10 years long. Due to their 200% acceleration growth rate, once they hit the biological age of 20, they were deployed into battle. Hey guys, in today's episode we will cover not just what happened to the clones in terms of their purpose after the Clone Wars, but rather what happened to those that were in the middle of their training when the rise of the Empire began. For example, those who were Boba Fett's age when we saw him in episode 2. What happened to the clones who were maybe just 5 of 10 years into their training and then stopped? What happened to the clones who were trained to be super soldiers, but never got to perform? That's what we'll find out in this episode of Star Wars Theory. I'm first going to say that the most lethal of the clones were the 501st Legion. They were turned into stormtroopers dedicated for Vader's missions and orders, titled Vader's Fist. Later, humans and aliens were included into the 501st Legion, diluting the clones in the army in general. That said, let's examine the few clones that were still left and their positions in the Empire and the galaxy. We're going to use a few resources in our analysis here. Some will be from the books, and the others will be from the Clone Wars and Rebels. In the novel Lords of the Sith, which takes place four years after Episode 3, Vader and Palpatine are secluded on the planet Ryloth, designed to lure the free Ryloth movement out of hiding. Several royal guards were killed when the Emperor and Vader's shuttle crash-landed on the planet. Two royal guards survived. One was an unidentified captain of the Royal Guards, and the other was a former clone trooper, Sergeant Erston Dees. The captain was later killed by Lilex, but Erston survived long enough for Imperial reinforcements to arrive. The Royal Guards' recruitment and training were of the most elite, and answered only to the Emperor, as if he were their only voice of command. They were one of the few to be trusted with the knowledge of the Emperor's true power as a Sith Lord, speaking of it to no one, not even amongst themselves. So, while most Red Guards were regular, unidentifiable captains of the Royal Red Guard Clan, only some, worth the job, of course, until they all died out, were transitioned clone troopers. In Rebels Season 2, we see Captain Rex after retiring on planet Silos. His two friends, Clone Commander Gregor and Clone Commander Wolf, were among those who personally removed their inhibitor chips, which caused them to be controlled by Sidious in Order 66's execution. In Season 2, we can see Clone Cut Locane. He retires and becomes a farmer, later to get married and adopt two children. His adopted daughter would tell him how he looks just like her father. It turns out that another clone had been her actual father before he abandoned them. Then in Star Wars Rebels, we see Rex able to join the Rebel Alliance and fight against the Empire. Most others either became stormtroopers, regular civilians, farmers, fathers, hitmen, or bounty hunters such as Boba Fett. Time to collect the unaltered clone from Jango. During Count Dooku's speech to persuade Jango in cloning his DNA for an army, Jango had requested Dooku to have one clone made for himself, unaltered with no aging processes. This clone would grow at a normal rate to learn everything he could from his father, so to speak, and from there he would find his own way throughout the galaxy, only to much later connect with Darth Vader and do all of his bounty hunting. Here's a quote from the canon book, Tarkin, which causes Tarkin to realize that Boba is in fact a clone from the Clone Wars. Excuses won't suffice, Sergeant Crest. Vader cut him off. Perhaps you are aging too quickly to remain on active duty. Tarkin couldn't make sense of the remark until he realized that Crest's was a face he had seen countless times during the war. The face of an original Kamino clone trooper. The bare-headed others comprising Vader's squad were human regulars who had enlisted after the war. Did you know that Boba Fett was the first to tell Vader of Luke's last name, leading to Vader finding out about his son for the very first time? Thanks so much for watching this episode, everyone. If you enjoyed it, please do hit like and support the channel. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you all in tomorrow's episode of Star Wars Theory. Until we meet again, my fellow Jedi and Sith friends, remember, the Force will be with you, always. Fulfill your destiny.